How's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. Today what we're going to be doing is going through another community questions one where I put a post on my community section on YouTube and we'll go through the comments that you guys left to the question that I gave to you. The question that I put on there today was, what advice would you give to someone struggling to improve with DPS? So I figured this would be quite useful for a lot of people learning to get into PVM um, and a lot of people do struggle with DPS. I actually get the question, can you make a DPS rotation guide or anything basically related to DPS so often. So I figured this would be useful for a lot of people so... Let's see what you guys said to help people out. If you do enjoy the video, if it helps you out at all, make sure to leave a like on it as well. Subscribe to the channel if you are new, but otherwise, let's go. So the first comment comes from Sneak Creeper, and you say, practice is a big part, and you'll just genuinely get better over time. Go slow and find your pace. I'd also make sure they have a good bar first and keybinds, as well as recommending getting stuff like the new spells and new god books. So this is great advice, and it's actually one that I wanted to put first because it's something that I always say to a lot of people, right? Practice actually helps out a hell of a lot more than getting big gear upgrades, or at least to some extent. Experience with using specific abilities in the right order and getting used to certain boss encounters and stuff like that is actually going to be a lot better at increasing your DPS over time with practice than it is just getting the next gear upgrade. Unless of course you're going from something really low gear all the way to something like really high, there's not going to be as much difference between that little gear upgrade from like tier 90s to tier 92s then getting used to rotations, getting used to uh, timings at bosses and that sort of stuff. And like you said, this comes with practice over time. It's not something that you have to get stressed out about and not something that you have to stress about this will happen over time just keep trying and you will see improvements as long as you are getting a increased kill time no matter what the kill time is as long as you're seeing improvements over time then that's great that's that's what you want to be seeing if you even knock one second off uh, two seconds off three seconds off eventually like that's an improvement and you can see that you actually are getting somewhere as for the good action bar and uh, also having keybinds this is really important because having a good action bar set up is always going to be very helpful in making sure you do rotations properly your action bar may differ if you're using revolution or full manual and of course using keybinds is going to be really important especially if you're using full manual even if you are using revolution or revo plus plus so having some keybinds for like thresholds and ultimates can also be super helpful as well and then of course you mentioned getting things like the new spells and the new god books any sort of gear upgrade is going to help out of course uh, but these new god books uh, like the when book for example is a great way to get low effort extra dps so this was really good advice and i really like it but the biggest part that i wanted to have first was that you will improve over time if you aren't there just yet keep trying keep practicing getting your rotations down and stuff is going to be absolutely huge anyway let's move on to the next one our next comment says poison is extremely underrated lots of people won't use a poison plus plus dose before a fight even though the synergy with cinder banes is whack <laughs> for a new or poorer player the investment into cinders and a spear with a few doses of poison plus plus will raise your dps a ton with no additional inputs this is so true there's a lot of people who don't use things like weapon poison plus plus or even vulnerability bombs and that sort of stuff and you really should they help out a hell of a lot and it only costs a little bit of extra gp per dose or per bomb that is actually gonna increase your dps just without much effort whatsoever in fact Drinking one of these poison doses before a fight is literally no effort whatsoever for the entire fight and it is going to help out a hell of a lot. And like he said, it does synergize really well with cinder banes, but even if you don't have cinder banes, you can still use weapon poison plus plus and it will add up over time and it is really good. Any boss that you can use poison at, you definitely should be using it because it does add a hell of a lot of damage. The fact that you don't have to put any extra inputs in whatsoever is just something that you just don't want to miss out on. If you are really someone who is struggling with DPS and you aren't using weapon poisons in places like Elite Dungeons or Carapac or just, just anywhere you know that it actually works, try it. Just chuck it on. You may think it won't be that much difference though. Just, just trust me. Give it a shot. Even if you can get cinder banes, grab those as well and just try again. Honestly, you will see a massive difference. One tip I want to add before this as well is if you have a one dose potion, you don't even have to take it with you. So you can just drink one dose, go into the boss fight and then kill the boss. And then when you bank, if you need to, then just drink another dose and go back in. It's something that I do usually. And this way you don't have to trade out any inventory space for food or anything like that to be able to put the weapon poison in there. Just drink it before you go in. Make sure you load your preset again and you're absolutely fine. Finally, you can also use incense sticks as well, and it is the quorum ones. If you use the quorum incense sticks, overload these and then just extend the timer. What it will do is it will increase the damage that your weapon poison actually does, helping you out even more. So if you really do need that extra DPS and your boss is poisonable, then make sure you use the incense sticks and then use a weapon poison dose as well. And just see if it does any difference for you if you're not using it already. The next comment says, read the description of abilities and try to find channels between skills. I do think they mean effects between skills. Like stunned opponents can take more damage 
from first abilities. Again, with this, I think they mean, for example, if a target is stunned using magic, you can actually use rack and it will do more damage than normal because the target is stunned or bound. The same goes with range and the same goes with stuff on melee as well. So it's definitely worth reading through your abilities and understanding exactly how they work. Some abilities that you may not be aware of do have secondary effects. Like I say, for example, if you put a bleed on someone and then you move them, it actually increases the damage that they take from certain bleeds. Using an ability like needle shot will actually increase the damage that you deal on your next ability as a flat damage increase. And then on magic, if you use concentrated blast or greater concentrated blast, it will increase the crit chance of your next ability as well. So these things are really important to know. And if you don't know them and you want to increase your DPS, just sit down, have a read through your abilities and just sort of take in what they do. Don't get overwhelmed because when you look at the range ones and you realize, oh, there's so many effects on this. And then you have to think like, oh, I'm gonna have to learn the magic ones as well and the melee ones. They actually carry across pretty identically. So range and magic are almost identical. There's a couple of differences, but not much whatsoever. The way they work and stuff is almost the same. The abilities just have different names and different animations, but otherwise they're more or less the same with the effects and stuff. Melee is slightly different, but you'll notice that they have the same sort of things in there. So it is quite easy to keep track of. Finally, they said also use ultimates like Berserk, Death Swiftness or Sunshine and raise your adrenaline to be able to use thresholds. As low levels, think about adrenaline potions and vulnerability bombs. This is definitely great advice, and if you are someone who is definitely just starting out in PvM, you do want to be able to use your ultimates like Desiphness, Sunshine, and Berserk. These are going to be your core things that you want to aim for. You want to be able to use your ultimates and then do DPS as much as you can while these ultimates are up. So Sunshine and Desiphness are probably the easiest ones to explain because you're going to put like a, a circle on the ground of smoke or of the sunshine, and you want to be inside that doing as much DPS as you can while you do have that duration up. Berserk's a little bit different because you get a very short amount of time to actually get damage off. So you want to be definitely be able to use like adrenaline potions and stuff with that. And Limitless as well helps out a hell of a lot. They did mention using adrenaline potions too and vulnerability bombs. I mentioned vulnerability bombs before, but what they do is they will give you a plus 10% damage increase just, just from throwing a bomb at someone. And it lasts one whole minute. Once you've applied the effect, it doesn't require any more input. It just gives you that damage straight away. As for adrenaline potions, if you don't have these or you don't use these, please do. They are so damn good. When you drop your Death Swiftness, your Sunshine, or use Berserk, it's going to put you down to 0% Adrenaline if you don't use Ring of Vigor. If you use an Adrenaline Potion straight after this, it will allow you to get to thresholds so much faster, and that is going to allow you to do a lot more damage, as if you use a threshold in a Death Swiftness, or a Sunshine, or a Berserk, you're going to be putting out a lot more damage than if you used it without, or if you just basically built your Adrenaline all the way up just with basics throughout the entire Ultimate. I know this one kind of sounds like a lot, but it's not. Basically, just read through your abilities and understand what they do don't stress about it too much and then also focus on your ultimate abilities and make sure you use adrenaline potions if you have access to them pretty much right away once you've dropped your ultimate the next comment says your health level is largely irrelevant as long as it's above zero get comfortable with camping lower health and effectively using adrenaline over just munching food whenever you take damage so this tip is probably more for the people who are getting a little bit towards being more comfortable in PVM. The reason being is it is a little bit risky and you kind of have to know your limits on how much damage you're allowed to take before you get killed. So once you've got a little bit of experience with bosses, you'll definitely be able to do this and it will have a hell of a lot. This is a great tip and it's definitely something that you should do if you're trying to squeeze out as much DPS as you can. What they're explaining is basically using food costs adrenaline. Apart from things like blubber jellyfish or brews, which only heal very small amounts, they cost adrenaline to actually eat. So rather than just eating back a load of food just because you've dropped to around about half health, you could risk it a little bit more, maybe you get some soul split flicks in or camp soul split a little bit longer to be able to get some thresholds off rather than dropping your adrenaline. An alternative to this would be to replace the actual food that costs you adrenaline with blue blubber jellyfish. They aren't going to heal as much, but they will not cost adrenaline, meaning you can still get off your thresholds and your ultimates and stuff a lot sooner. But eating fish quite a lot just to keep your health really high will cost you adrenaline and it will slow down your DPS by quite a bit. Like I say, this is probably going to be more for people who are getting comfortable in certain situations uh, because it is going to require you to understand that this boss can hit about 2.5k. So as long as my health is about 3k, then I'll be okay. And then if it does drop below that, then I can suddenly just eat a little bit of food quickly, get myself back up to that point, and then you'll be absolutely fine. Next up, we have one that says easiest and biggest DPS increase is back bolts. Fun bombs are amazing. Smoke cloud, book of when are all things that require minimal input will increase your damage. So before we move on to the next bit of this, I just wanted to mention, of course, back bolts is the back mineral bolts that you get for ranged. For magic and melee, these won't be a thing you can use, but they are making a really good point here. And what they're trying to say basically is there's a lot of stuff you can buy that are pretty cheap and you don't have to actually invest a ton of money to be able to actually increase your DPS. 
Vulnerability bombs, like I said earlier, are a flat 10% damage increase. You should definitely be using these if you aren't already. They are really easy to use. For what they do, they are a great value for money. Back criminal bolts are absolutely amazing for range because the enchanted versions will increase your damage by a hell of a lot by using the right effects. Ruby bolts will allow you to get uh, 12k hits or 15k hits depending if you're using a grimoire or not. Using things like smoke cloud, which is the new spell from magic, which will increase your crit damage, will actually increase the amount of damage you do on every single crit. So it is definitely something that's worth doing. Once you've cast the spell on the target, you will not have to do anything else again for two minutes, which of course is absolutely great because it's only one more input extra to be able to get that damage increase. Using pocket slot items like the Book of Wen or other books as well are of course great. And if you don't have these, then it's definitely worth bringing one along and making sure you have that charged and use that as well. Once you've activated it before the fight starts, again, you will have no more input to actually do with it. You can just let it do its thing and it will increase your damage too. The second part of the comment says, other than making sure you use only the best river bar, Needle Strike, Greater Fury, and Greater Concentrate Blast are all amazing abilities to have in that one spot since they all have effects that benefit your next attack. So what they're saying here is what I mentioned earlier where if you have like a Needle Strike and then you use another ability after, it will increase the damage by a flat percentage. For example, it's definitely worth using Needle Strike before you use things like Snapshot or Rapid Fire as it does increase the damage of the next two hits that you do. The damage increase on Needle Strike increases the damage on the next ability, but if that ability hits multiple times, it will do the first two hits. So snapshot, both hits will increase. Rapid fire, the first two hits will increase, and then the rest will go back to normal. This is a basic ability that gains you adrenaline, does decent damage, and also increases the damage of your next attack. There is absolutely no reason you wouldn't want to use Needle Strike as often as you can. The other abilities also have effects just like this as well, so it's definitely worth, like I said, reading through these, but having these in the right order on a revolution bar is super important if you don't have them like that already. To find out a good revolution bar, you could probably join the PVME Discord. If you give that a Google, you'll be able to get an invite link for that probably. Or you could look it up on the wiki and have a look for what they've got there. However, those aren't always going to be ideal. Sometimes they're a little bit mm, just not the best, but it is definitely going to be an improvement if you have just got the abilities thrown on there at random times. That being said, if you aren't using Revolution, it doesn't really matter what order you have your abilities on the bar because you're using them manually yourself. But at this point, you do need to understand what order the abilities work best in. And like I say, that comes back to reading through the abilities, understanding the effects, and knowing which ability to use before the last one to be able to increase the damage overall. This will come with practice it will come with time it's going to take time to learn it's going to take a lot of experience to work out what works best next but eventually you will so don't panic about it too much but just yeah just keep at it and you'll definitely get there so that's gonna be the last comment that i do put in the video because most of the other ones were kind of repeating the same sort of comments and of course i don't want to just keep repeating the same things however there's a couple of things i wanted to add personally and that is things that you can work towards invention if you don't have that unlocked perks are absolutely amazing you definitely want to have those you could use these on switches if you don't want to be doing switches then you can still put them on your main hand and stuff but having perks certain situations help out a hell of a lot one of the perks that i would recommend you do absolutely get is going to be planted feet if there's one perk that you get get planted feet because this is a massive dps increase as it does extend your death swiftness or your sunshine and obviously having that extended is a big dps increase over time as long as you're still stood inside of it other than that making sure that you do have things like curses unlocked for the extra prayers and damage make sure you do have your overloads unlocked and then upgrade those as far as you can to the herbal level that you do have available to you overloads and curses are going to be a great way to increase your dps with little effort from yourself and if you don't have these these are definitely something that you want to work towards finally i just want to mention that moving off of revolution plus plus which is where it'll automatically use your thresholds your ultimates even your defensives for you moving down to just revolution allowing you to only use your basics automatically and then using your threshold yourself manually this will help out a lot it really will it'll allow you to have a lot more control over your character which will increase your damage over time it will take practice but you can do it i know you can so just keep at it and keep practicing i just wanted to mention once again the same comment that we had at the beginning saying that you will improve over time if you are new to pvm which is what this is sort of aimed towards you are going to improve over time you will pick up little things at a time you don't have to just suddenly wake up tomorrow and be amazing at this people who would do great dps people who are absolutely kicking ass at bosses have been doing it for a super long time and you just need to keep that in mind don't let yourself get weighed down by people that get like 
sub three minute kill times at bosses and you're sat on seven minutes that's absolutely fine because they were probably there at one point as well and honestly you just still have a lot of stuff to learn that's absolutely fine as well and that's a great part of the game being able to learn the bosses and stuff is something you definitely want to enjoy while you can so don't beat yourself up over it don't compare yourself in a negative way just look for those improvements of one second two seconds ten seconds and they will jump and you will suddenly be doing things that you've picked up in the boss fights or things that you've picked up through dps rotations over time and you'll just notice that damn suddenly you are absolutely kicking ass but like i say i can't stress enough how important practicing rotations are and things like that is and you'll hear people say all the time just look up rotations or just in improve your rotations it is not that simple honestly dps rotations is something that is so difficult to just pick up you can't just look it up on the wiki and be like right that's a perfect rotation it's going to come with practice you have to teach your brain to press the right abilities in the right order and you will do eventually it like i say it's just going to take a lot of time of training yourself to do that and knowing that there's a certain opportunity for you to use this ability and this is the best time to do so when to spend adrenaline when to save adrenaline all that sort of stuff it comes with experience in bosses it comes with experience in pvm and it comes with experience in sticking to one combat style for a while and getting used to it but anyway i hope you did enjoy this video if it did help you out make sure to leave a like on it let me know in the comments if you learned anything let me know in the comments if you are someone who is good at dps and you have anything to share with other people as well i'm sure people will be scrolling through the comments to find other stuff too so make sure you share some stuff if you have it otherwise guys thank you all so much for watching i really do appreciate it thank you to my channel members for the extra support your names will be on screen right now of course as always so thank you to you guys if anyone else is interested in joining the channel members click the join button that's next to the subscribe button and you can actually get some perks while you support the channel as well so if you're interested give that a click and it'll pop up with all the stuff and you can have a read through it anyway guys thank you all so much for watching i really appreciate it and i'll see you all in the next one see you there guys bye